You see, this action by the Colorado justices is an example of manifest corruption. This is about as lame and stupid and imbecilic and half-baked and preposterous as you can get. And remember, these are the times when there's lots of competition in all those categories. This is straight out of Venezuela, bananas and all. Introduction to a disjointed rant, or prolegomena to any future diatribes. So the Supreme Court of the state of Colorado determined that Donald Trump was ineligible to be on the ballot in Colorado. And so I wanted to share some of my thoughts with you. I thought it was time for me to share my heart. This all just happened yesterday, and Twitter is all in a doodah, and I don't have much time, which means that my thoughts here might seem a little like a stream of consciousness project, meaning like Gertrude Stein after a couple of beers. I'm afraid I have to ask all of you to simply deal with it. We are in hot pursuit of the white stag of truth, and the white stag of truth waits for no man. If you want to take the white stag of truth down, you have to say whatever comes into your head, so to speak. Did I say that this was going to be disjointed? Let's begin with the absolute need for no shilly-shallying, which means that we shall have to resort to a pointed metaphor. This court decision was a misbegotten cross between a jackal and a hyena, and the cub was ugly even by the standards of those two species. Nothing like a cheetah or gazelle, because those are graceful, like way below that. And then this critter was not even up to that low mark. One does not expect much from the Colorado Supreme Court, and this was still disappointing. The lineage was one thing against it, for starters, and it was buck-toothed and cross-eyed on top of everything else. When we consider the legality of what they did, I'm astonished that they didn't remove Trump from the ballot in Nebraska also. After all, Nebraska touches Colorado. You say that they have no authority to remove him from the ballot in Nebraska? Ah, say I. Then how do they remove him from the ballot in Colorado then? Just do it. Look up the arguments later. The Times will back you. So this decision was handed down in Colorado. I need to remind everyone that pot was legalized there about 10 years ago. Let's keep this thing in context. Do you want evidence that the bad guys cheated big time in 2020? Do you require some evidence that they are going to cheat big time in 2024? The answer to that question, ladies and gentlemen, lies before you stretched out on that stainless steel table, the kind they use in morgues. We know that they have cheated and that they will continue to cheat, and we know this because they are cheating. They are cheating in broad daylight, with reporters covering it all and taking notes, and with the cameras running. I'm writing this blog post in response to the national story of how the Colorado Supreme Court gathered up their black robes in order to run a relay race for the gold in the cheating championship. This is naked election interference. This is an assault on all the voters of Colorado, not just the ones who are going to vote for Trump. The effrontery takes the breath away. Suppose someone offers as counter evidence the fact that Hillary lost in 2016 and says that this is evidence that they didn't cheat in that one, and so they aren't cheaters, right? And so what about that, hmm? The reply to this argument is that not only are they corrupt, they are also conceited. They thought they had that one in the bag, and so there was no need to waste any of their resources, for they are also covetous, to put away an election that they believed in their conceits that they had already put away. You do realize that the Federal Election Commission is going to need to investigate the Colorado Supreme Court over what appears to be an in-kind contribution to the Trump campaign. In fact, some enterprising prosecutor in some suitably woke place, Rhode Island say, needs to file another felony charge against Donald Trump for bribing the Colorado Supremes into doing this thing for him. In the meantime, Vivek Ramaswamy has said that he's not going to compete in Colorado if Trump is not on the ballot there, and he called on the other Republican contenders to boycott Colorado for the same reason. You know that it is crazy tunes time when the Hindu acts like a Christian and the Christians act like, you know, Christians. This one is going straight up to the Supreme Court, and I can imagine that a lot of strange and colorful oaths are filling up those chambers right now. The Colorado judges handed the baby to the federal Supremes, and it appears they did it on purpose. They might be lunatics, but they're not crazy. You see, the Colorado justices made this decision and then vacated it until January 4th, 2024, which is just a few weeks from now. This means that if the SCOTUS picks up this case by that date, then Trump will be on the ballot in Colorado. If they don't take the case, then he won't be, and SCOTUS becomes the bad guy, and the Colorado Johnnies fade into the background. Like I said, strange and colorful oaths. You see, this action by the Colorado justices is an example of manifest corruption. This is about as lame and stupid and imbecilic and half-baked and preposterous as you can get. And remember, these are the times when there's lots of competition in all those categories. This is straight out of Venezuela, bananas and all. So as it stands now, the SCOTUS has a flat-out binary choice. They either take the case or they don't. 
If they don't, then the federal Supremes will be as discredited as the Colorado guys, which is pretty discredited, regime hacks and robes. By this point, the Colorado guys are like an old ratty t-shirt that got down into the sump pump well last year and is wrapped around the filter. And so if they take the case, they either have to side with Colorado or side with Trump. There is no evading this one. Either they blow up the credibility of their institution, not to mention the credibility of all future U.S. elections, or they side with Donald Trump. And if they side with Trump, they still have to attend wine and cheese events in the D.C. area, the ones hosted by the cool kids. The cool kids are the ones who think that the Colorado court was stunning and brave. But in the meantime, Lady Justice is looking out at America, and by this point, her eyes look like a couple of Kumamoto oysters that have been dead for a week. I try to imagine myself residing in my old digs, meaning my 2016 headspace, back when I didn't believe any of Donald Trump's political promises, not even one. I opposed him root and branch all through the primaries. I refused to vote for him in the general because I flat didn't believe him. I wrote somebody else in, and no, I won't tell you who. He has not exactly covered himself with glory since that time. But then, as that 2016 evening wore on, and it began to look as though, no, no, forget Trump, it began to look as though Hillary was going to lose, I began to experience my first... No, it was not a religious experience, but it was like a warm glow beginning at my ankles and working its way up. It began to appear that I was not going to have to spend the first 10 minutes of my devotional time in the mornings getting my heart right, preparing myself to face another day of President Hillary. A modicum of gratitude to this strange Trump man began to creep into my hard heart. And then do you know what he did? All those promises that I didn't believe? He started keeping them. But I got derailed. Suppose that warm glow never did get north of my ankles. Suppose I had failed to recognize that he appointed a bunch of good guys to the federal courts. Suppose we didn't have him to thank for the destruction of Roe. Suppose all of that and the cynical citizen from 2016, that was me, was rudely confronted with the commies' use of the courts today in order to prosecute and hound a political opponent. Suppose I was still in the place where I could not see any redeeming qualities about Trump himself. What would I do in this circumstance? What would I do with this pig's breath? breakfast. I would absolutely vote for Trump in 2024 because it would be the only plausible way to strike a blow against this regime rot. And this leads to the final point. SCOTUS has a moment of truth coming straight at them and all within the next couple of weeks. But so do all those never Trump evangelicals. If they are not the loudest voices in opposition to this, standing against this naked assault on our freedoms, then they will have done nothing but add their names to history's long roster of quislings and rotters a roster already too long. If they try to protest this judgment, using their standard line against Trump that quote-unquote character matters, my response to them would not be gentle. It would run something along the lines of, yeah, character matters, but not your character, apparently. Character matters, but not the character of the regime you are trying to pretend still has some legitimacy. You won't support Trump because he appears grimy in your eyes, and so you wind up supporting a regime that looks grimy to the whole world. And so it became a byword in Israel. Behold how the fastidious have themselves become grimy. Mm -hmm.